Hello friends, welcome back to part 18 in my Tesla Q4 2022 earnings forecast video review series. I am joined as always by my host, Loki, who is curled up in bed. Let's get right back to where we left off, talking about the non-GAAP earnings and the non-GAAP earnings per share uh, diluted. I don't have a row here that says non-GAAP earnings per share uh, adjusted but if there were one here, it would say $1.12 uh, as Wall Street would adjust it uh, to exclude a one-time tax benefit that I'm forecasting. All right, what's next in my forecast model? Well, I've got some rows here that I have labeled peg ratio. What are we talking about when we say peg ratio? We're saying PE is nice, but it's not the entire story. Um, it's not a good rule of thumb to say every company should be trading at a PE of 16. And if it's less than that, it's good to buy. And if it's more than that, it's uh, too expensive. Well, that's dumb. Uh, and the reason is different companies are in different situations, right? You need to, uh, to do a much more thorough examination of a company before you know whether they're undervalued or overvalued. And one of the most important considerations, aside from looking at their balance sheet and their cash flows uh, to see how uh, they're doing and what position they're in, is to see, are they expected to grow their earnings in the future? Um, there's no such thing as a lifetime achievement award uh, for stock prices. Stocks do not look to the past, they look to the future. What's going to happen in the future? informs whether a stock is a good buy or not. And on this channel, I never give out any financial advice. So uh, do your own research, and this video is for entertainment purposes only. But I'll, I'll uh, tell you what I have going on in my peg ratio section here. So the first row we have here is the next 12 months non-GAAP EPS. Uh, what's this formula doing? It's looking at the row right above it, the non-GAAP earnings per share diluted. So here's what I'm forecasting for full year 2023. $1.71, $2, $2.36, $2.87 by quarter. If you add all those up, you get $9. Um, forget the three cents, you get $9, right? So what's this next row do? It says, let's take that $9.03 and subtract what that number was one year ago. A year ago, that same calculation was $4.46 when you add up what I had in here for the full year 2022, $1.776, $1.5, $1.57, uh, which includes that one-time tax item that I keep mentioning. You'd probably wish that I would stop mentioning. So that's $4.57 worth of year-over-year -year growth in the non-GAAP EPS expected over the following 12 months. That's what that number is. So what's this next row do? It just takes uh, this amount, uh, the expectation for the next 12 months, non-GAAP EPS, divides it by the prior year number and subtracts one from that. What's that giving you? It's giving you the growth rate. It's saying 457 is 102% growth over 446 in the prior year, which it is. Um, if it were only 2% growth, then it would only be $0.09 cents worth of growth over here, right? It would be growing from 446 to 455. Uh, but it's not growing to 455. It's growing to $9.03. It's growing by $4.57 is what's in my forecast. Uh, so that's a 102% growth rate. That's a lot of growth. That's way more than most companies are going to report. Uh, and a guy named Peter Lynch would tell you that that matters. Um, if a company is growing their earnings by a whole lot, or expected to grow their earnings by a whole lot, you ought to be willing to pay a much higher P.E. multiple for that company because a year into the future, that P.E. will get cut in half at a 100% growth rate, right? Their earnings are twice as much a year from now, the P.E. multiple will be half as much because it's the price divided by the earnings. Uh, the bigger the earnings get, the smaller the PE gets. Uh, if the price doesn't move, uh, so the price probably will move, right? The price probably will go up. 
Okay, uh, all things being equal, uh, all, all bets are off in the bear market, we've learned this year. Uh, so what's this next row say? It says P-E ratio trailing 12-month non-GAAP earnings. So this is taking the prior year uh, number in the denominator, the 446, and what's in, in, what's in the numerator uh, on row 1204? It's the trailing six-month average stock price forecast. So we are not going to get 292. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a much lower number than that for the... Uh, six-month average stock price actual when I update that number. Uh, but if you believe that number, then it would say, uh, hey, you've got, um, I'll scroll back up and show it to you again, $292 worth of stock price, and you're dividing that into earnings of 446 in the prior year. What's that PE multiple? It's a P.E. of 66 if the price were that high, which it isn't. Uh, so what's this next row say? It says take that same number again, that same stock price forecast, and this time instead divide it by T1201 through W1201. Uh, Let's go up here and find those. That's the gap earnings per share diluted. So forget the non-gap. Let's look at the gap number. Uh, what kind of P.E. ratio would it be on the gap earnings? So that would be a 73, using that same price uh, target for the six-month trailing average. So these numbers will get uh, lower with a lower assumption for the price of the stock. And next we've got a P.E. ratio based on the next 12 months gap earnings. So what's that do? Same idea. Same 292, but instead of dividing it by the trailing 12-month average, we divide it by the forecast for 2023 gap earnings. Uh, so that's a much lower number. That's a 34 PE. So what's this peg ratio number doing? Well, it's taking the uh, 1239, which is the PE ratio of 66, and it's dividing it by the growth rate. So it's the PE over the G. Therefore, PEG, right, PE divided by growth rate times 100. So you take the 102%, which is really 1.02. You multiply it by 100 to make it 102. Uh, and you divide the 66 into the 102, and that gives you a 0 0.64. That's low. Uh, that's a good deal. Uh, PE, so PEG ratio, the lower it is, the better it is, the same as uh, with P.E. The lower it is, the better a deal you're getting uh, on that stock. Uh, the lower the number, uh, the more undervalued that stock is relative to the growth that you expect from it. And that's the adjustment that Peter Lynch famously made in his uh, Magellan Fund that for 30 years outperformed every other fund in the market because he was buying stocks based on their PEG ratios, uh, among other considerations. And that's why the very next row I have named after Peter Lynch here, this is his PEG equals one price target. So what's this do? It takes that 0 0.69 in the denominator, and then it takes this uh, price, this trailing six month average stock price, it says, all right, if you take the stock price, you divide it by that 0 0.69 peg, that tells you you would be willing to pay as much as $400 uh, for this stock uh, based on the peg ratio. And the next row here is giving you the 12-month price target uh, with a historic peg ratio adjustment. So what are we doing here? We're starting with $7.73 worth of next 12 months non-GAAP EPS. I'm in the Q3 column here. Maybe I shouldn't be, but uh, that forecast for $7.73 worth of non-GAAP EPS is being multiplied by 100, again, to make it 773. And then we're multiplying that by the average of these amounts. Uh, so I guess it doesn't matter whether you apply, uh, you uh, multiply by 100 here or here. We did it on the other term in the previous calculation, but it's the same result either way. So here are the PEG ratios that uh, Tesla has been averaging over the trailing four quarters. 
What number does that give you? It gives you $937 worth of price target. Uh, these are big numbers uh, moving forward uh, into future years on this row. And what do we have here for fun? We've got Stevenson Indicator. It's going to end this year at $420.69. Uh, I'm going to say that without taking out the decimal on here. Uh, okay, I'll take out the decimal and show you what the real number is. It's very, very close, 420.67. Uh, so that's that's funny uh, and coincidental that it happened to end there. Truly, that one is coincidental. I have another 420.69 in here. Uh, for my deliveries forecast, which may yet turn out to be correct. Uh, so I don't want to hear anybody telling me I uh, made it just for the laughs. It may end up being a pretty good forecast for Tesla deliveries this quarter. Uh, so that is the peg ratio section and a good place for me to end this video and say if you've enjoyed today's video click the like button and if you're not subscribed to my channel go ahead subscribe to my channel that's free uh, to do that as all my videos are. Click the alert bell if you want to be notified when I post fresh videos. And thank you to everyone who supports me, especially my executive producers, Kathy Kochler and Alter Ferguson Financial. And I'll see you in the next one.